Um, well, first I'll tell you, like, well, Sodian's mission is to really provoke people to think about the ideas and um, stories that are embedded in objects and images, right? Nothing is what it seems, and that's uh, kind of our, our premise here. And um, our collection spans um, the mid-1800s, which is ba basically the height of the Industrial Revolution, to the mid-20th century, or the, you know, around the beginning of the Second World War. And um, it's during this time period that there are really profound technological and social changes going on that come with the advent of um, mechanization, industrialization, right? So changes in mass communication, changes in mass production, changes in mass transportation, and all of this new um, activity generates uh, an entirely, you know, unknown environment to people, right? A lot of new noise that people had never heard before. And I wanted to start here because for me, this painting, which was done in 1912, like right in the middle of all of this, uh, it's called Winter Morning in the Cast Steel Works by a German painter um, named Fritz Gardner. And, um, you know, for the first hundred years of the industrial, uh, industrialization of Europe, Germany, uh, rural Germany, was relatively untouched, but then, you know, like, bam, um, it gets taken over by um, factories, by, um, by, uh, by mines, by uh, transportation systems. And, um, uh, you know, for me, this painting, you know, sort of captures um, that change. And I want you to think about the noise, you know, when you look at this, right? I think what the artist does in this, like, two-dimensional work um, really brilliantly is, you know, look at the light that is thrown off by these new places, these new industrial places. And to me, this is really beautiful. I mean, I grew up in New Jersey, and I remember driving, you know, when I was a kid in the 60s, driving up in the parkway and turning off onto the New Jersey Turnpike and seeing port, waking up, you know, my grandparents lived at the shore, we lived right outside of New York City. And, um, you know, I, I wake up sometime in the backseat of my parents' car and see the lights of industrial Elizabeth in New Jersey. And for me, it was like really beautiful. Like, it was just beautiful. And I think that's what this reminds me of. Um, so I want you to think about all that while um, Rat uh, is making his way through the galleries and think about objects and sound and, you know, and this time period and what this must have seemed like to people. And then I'll bring it back to that at the end of the tour.
question over whether it was the Dadaists or the Futurists who really um, kind of uh, invented noise. Um, and, um, you know, for me, uh, I came down on the side of the Futurists, even though they weren't necessarily the first people to actually perform uh, with found sound um, or noise. Um, they certainly were the first people to talk about it. So, um, over here, I wanna, uh, actually I want to call your attention to the two books on, on either side that come from our library. Um, these are both um, uh, by um, Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, who is the father of Futurism, right? So he wrote his Futurism Manifesto in 1909. These two volumes um, illustrate kind of the Futurist and Marinetti's um, interest in experimenting with ty typography. I mean, the Futurists, um, you know, like the Dadaists, really wanted to see kind of a uh, typographic revolution, you know, and in both of these volumes, um, uh, these illustrate uh, the words in freedom movement, which Marinetti um, invented, and um, what he's doing is, you know, he's created this new art form in which he's experimenting um, with uh, poetic verse, typography, and um, they're really heavily focused on onomatopoeia, right, which is words that um, represent the sounds or events that they're intended to, you know, evoke. Um, and so this is, you know, his um, Words and Freedom manifesto um, that he wrote very early in his career. And this is, he wrote at the end of his life in 1944, um, which you know, kind of morphed this and grew this into alphabet in, you know, alphabet and freedom. Um, but you can see in both of them, you know, he's experimenting with type and, and, and really words about sound and poetry about sound, or sound poetry. Right? Um, so uh, this is, um, uh, Zhang Tum Tum, right, and this book was really all about evoking um, uh, the, the, the through words the sound of the um, siege of a uh, siege during the um, uh, Bulgarian Turkish War of 1912. Um, also, just like a musical side note, um, the, the Zhang Tum Tum, right, because you can think about think about that sound, right, Zhang Tum Tum, right, so really kind of a, a weapon sound or a bomb dropping or something, right? But um, this was the inspiration for the name of ZTT Records, which is a, which is, was a British avant pop um, label in the 1980s, um, founded in 1983, and they gained some uh, prominence and success with bands like um, Freddie Goes to Hollywood, uh, Propaganda, and um, The Art of Noise, right? A band that took its name from L'Arte del Rumori which is the art of noises, all right? So Luigi Russolo was a futurist and, um, you know, really probably embodied futurism more than any other futurist and really took this break with the past and in particular this break um, with, you know, kind of a musical past to the extreme. And um, I'm gonna, actually I wanna read some quotes because they're, uh, they just really illustrate this perfectly. So in 1913, Rusolo, who was a futurist painter, um, was, uh, wrote a letter to the composer Valeda Pratella after hearing a performance of um, one of his symphonies in Rome and quoting from the letter, while I was listening to the orchestral performance of your overwhelming futurist music, there came to mind the idea of a new art, one that you can only create, the art of noises, a logical consequence of your marvelous innovations. So, um, uh, Rusolo was really the first in this document, in this manifesto, to articulate the idea of found sound and noise. Um, and he, again, I said, like I said, he wasn't the first to execute this in practice. That really, just, that distinction does go to the data as Cocteau, the you know, famous Cocteau, um, uh, um, I don't know, the first thing I'm talking about his names. Um, da -da 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 -da. Anyway, Picasso and uh, Eric Satie. Um, and, and their you know, first kind of um, performance uh, during which they um, employed all kinds of objects, typewriters, steam engines, um, and um, a um, dynamo, which on your way out, if you look right outside of our cafe, we have one of the um, early Edison uh, dynamos, which is a generator, right? One of these new uh, mechanical objects that was creating all of these new sounds during this time period and surrounding people. So, um, Rusolo's Art of Noises was surely the inspiration for that performance, that Dada's performance. Um, so, uh, he writes in the Art of Noises, and an English translation of this is available online, it's a short read, it's a great read. 
So he says in this, let us cross a large modern capital with our ears more sensitive than our eyes. We will delight in distingu distinguishing the eddying of water, of air or gas in metal pipes, the muttering of voters that breathe and pulse with an indisputable animality, the throbbing of valves, the bustling of pistons, the shrieks of mechanical saws, the starting of trams on tracks, the cracking of whips, the flipping, or flapping, sorry, of awnings and flags. We will amuse ourselves by orchestrating together in our imagination the din of rolling shop shutters, the varied hub of train stations, ironworks, thread mills, printing presses, electrical plants, and subways. Right, this gets us back to what I was saying in the beginning. Right, This is, this is our time period here in the Wilsonian. Right? Um, so um, now to, to, to introduce these kind of everyday sounds into composition at that time was really absurd, right? Crazy. I mean, we don't think anything of it now, right? Because it's, you know, Beatles did it. All sorts of people did it, right? Um, John Cage followed early on. The Beatles did it. And uh, I forget what, what song I'm thinking of. Anyway, everybody did it. Does it. Um, but um, mechanization uh, was a thing that really, uh, Rusola was trying to harness those sounds, those mechanical sounds, through mechanized means. Right? And so he um, built this, it was amongst many things that he built like it, but this, um, and I, uh, my, my Italian is non-existent, this um, intona in, in in right? So this, this sound machine basically looks like any, you know, a lot of contemporary speaker systems, right? But um, uh, he, he really wanted to be able to recreate those things. So now, at most of the concerts that were solo staged with this thing, um, riots broke out, and, um, and, and, and he really, wait, it gets better, right? So, um, Rousseau really, if anybody, embody the rage of the futurists, right? And their, um, their, their rallying call to sing the love of danger. And um, he may have incited some of those riots purposely at some of those shows. So I'm going to quote an account uh, of someone who attended one of those shows. At the beginning of the third piece, an extraordinary thing happens. Marinetti, um, Boccioni, Armando, Mazzi, and Piatti vanish from the stage, emerge in the empty orchestra pit, run across it, and hurl themselves among the seats, assaulting the many pastists, now drunk with the rage of tradition and imbecility, with blows, slaps, and cudgels. Right, so to me, this is the first documentation of um, stage diving. <laughs> 50 years before punk came on the scene. Right? So, yeah, exactly. So, for so long, so, for punk. so um, I just want to bring that around and um, bring back this, you know, this around to why rat, why noise, why the Wolfsonian together in one place. And thank you all for being here. So.